Hi again. Um, I always feel like there's a lot more we can talk about in the way of color. It just seems like it just goes on and on and on, and there's just an infinite amount of interesting things about color. So uh, today I sort of want to talk more about the uh, the painter's color wheel and uh, gamut masking and creating a full range of colors out of a limited range of colors. Uh, as you can see here, we have... Um, a sort of a a color wheel that we've we've created, and then some swatches of different uh, gradations of color. But the trick here is that we did this from just a limited subset of the full range of colors, and the painters will do this quite often because they just have a limited number of pigments, and pigments are very expensive, uh, especially orange for some reason. But uh, um. Usually a painter will just use maybe six or seven colors or even less, and they use this to great effect. And we wonder why digital art often doesn't look uh, as compelling as maybe traditional art. And this is, I think, one of the big reasons is because of uh, painters using these limited palettes. And now there's this concept of uh, gamut masking that's been around for a number of years uh, that we've now integrated into Haller. Now, formerly, we formerly 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 we've used um, another uh, method of limiting palettes um, called either themes or uh, pigment profiles which are uh, basically the same idea using a limited number of colors to create a, a new color wheel uh, the difference here instead of masking part of the color wheel out we would create this limited number of colors and then we would expand those out into a new uh, map those out into a new color wheel so you'd have that full range. But I think there's some benefits to using this uh, this technique where just part of the uh, the wheel is available and, the, and you only see the part you want to work on uh, because it still gives you this, this context of where everything is. You can look over here and say, well, I know there's more red over here and there's more blue over there, and it's really easy to figure that out. Uh, and that can be useful for some types of painting because... Uh, as we're going to do today, we're going to try to create an entire color wheel, an entire spectrum of color, just using these purples and reds and this little bit of yellow over here. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to look and say, well, I know there's more orange or more red towards that. Or it's warmer over towards this side and it's cooler over towards, towards that side. And using that content, we can, we can help understand how we're going to create a, an entire rainbow of colors. So let's clear this. And let's start with what we know. We know we need some yellow. And uh, keep in mind we can change the shade here. So that gives us um, a lot more. If you look here, it's just kind of pink. But if you look as we take it down uh, a bit, you can see it gets a little bit more red. It's a, it's a darker red. But we can use that. And as we get down further and further, there's, you can see there's a deep purple here. So we can use that as well. It's almost ranging on blue. So we know we've already got some yellows, reds, and blues in here. And that's... There's a lot we can do with that. In fact, we can create all our colors from red, yellow, and blue So, um, with some trickery. So let's dive in. Pick a uh, medium that we want to use. I'm going to pick an oily color. Um, let's just pick oily one. And I'm going to turn off for this, for this uh, exercise. I'm going to turn off, uh, not color blend. I'm going to turn off the uh, paper bumpiness because that adds bumpiness and it directly into the image and it can alter the um, the colors that we're mixing the uh, this bleed setting um, and there's some ways we can get around that if we still want paper texture if we go to new if we go to new there's an option to create a, pe a paper texture directly as a layer and then we can turn this bumpy uh, thing off and still get the paper, but we're not going to worry about paper texture for today. We're just going to worry about getting some color. And I'm going to start with my, uh, let's see. All right, I'm going to start with my yellows here. And I'm going to go back and turn that off again, bumpiness, because I reloaded that. All right, so I'm going to paint some yellow here. Got some purple. I know yellow. I know purple is okay. My caps lock key was on. That's why I couldn't get the right color. Um, something to be aware of. So I know I got yellow and I know I got purple. And I know those two colors are complementary. So we can already 
start to work on a uh, color wheel here and I'm just kind of going to fade this out a bit. I'm going to use that white to fade that out a bit. And just because we have that bumpiness turned off doesn't mean we're not going to get paper texture because we still have um, we still have this dry brush turned on. I'm just going to kind of fade this out towards the bottom there and I'm going to take this purple. I'll find a deeper purple and use it down towards the bottom. Um, I'm going to use the white to blend that off out there. So we've already got a good range of uh, yellow and purple there at least. Uh, now we want to find some red, and that's going to be a bit tricky. But I'm going to add a second layer, and I'm going to use my layer panel for that. I think I'll use the layers just to make this a little bit easier. So, just add a layer. And I'm not going to cheat and use these analogous or complementary colors. I'm using the working colors in the wheel here. I'm going to put the most red color here, which I think is right there. As we know, this is getting warmer, so the reds are over here. So... Probably that one, and find just the right shade of that. Take that right there, and that's probably as red as we're gonna get. I can look up there, it's sort of a mauve color. Um, and I'm this on the second layer, and I'm just gonna start painting that in. Maybe a little brighter. Start painting that in, and I'm gonna overlap it with this purple a little bit towards the bottom, and I'm gonna overlap it with this yellow towards the top. That's probably. As red as I'm going to get. Oh, too purple. And I'm going to pick some white over here and just blend this off. And remember, since we're on, um, we're on this other layer, we're not mixing with that yellow. We're just kind of mixing over it. And I'm going to blend it down here, blend it out a bit, so we're still getting our purple. And since that's not really intense, what I might do is just add another layer and just double up on that and put more red on that, and it'll become more intense that way. And you can do this for really any of the colors. And it's a little bit of a cheat, but it works. And now you can see between this uh, this kind of color, this mauve color here, and this yellow, we're starting to get something vaguely re resembling an orange. Um, now keep in mind, if we're working in a limited palette, that orange color is valid because you know if under certain lighting conditions and certain uh you know painting palettes uh you may not see oranges and and stuff like that because um you know if you put a color filter over a camera it'll filter out certain colors and, you, and they'll just show up as like a gray uh, and that's valid as a you know photographic technique or as a painting technique uh using a limited palette is a valid painting technique so we're going to go ahead I just suggest there's there's some orange there, and you get the idea. Your eye your eye understands that. Um, I might put a little more yellow in that just to help sell it. Let me go back to this base layer. I'll just put a little more yellow right there to sell that orange. All right, so now we just need a little green somehow. And well, we don't obviously don't have any green, hardly any at all. We do have a little bit here. We know this is going towards cooler colors than yellow. Yellow and blue make green, right? And blue is cooler, so we know this is green or greenish. So I'm going to go ahead and just start, maybe put it on another layer. Go up here, start mixing that in. And yeah, that's a perfectly good green, actually. Going to call that uh, usable. Um, I'll put some of that white and just kind of blend it a little bit. Oops, maybe too much. Uh, so we have a good green, we have a good yellow, we have a uh, an okay red, <laughs> and we'd have a probably a little bit of a purple. We need to intensify this purple, so I'll go down here and figure out what layer I have my purple on, and I'll just probably add a little more purple in there. Um, and I need little more red in there so I will do the best I can uh, now we just need to figure out how to make a little blue so I'll find the bluest color I can on here it's probably about here and I will probably mix it with this green maybe and there's roughly our blue and I'll probably want to intensify that more with some more green on top of it and there you go so um, we've really done our best here to create an entire color wheel. 
from just this limited palette. Uh, as you see, we have pretty good yellows and greens, pretty good uh, blues, pretty good purples at least. Um, reds are kind of faltering, but they ex exist in this world uh, to some degree. We just have to use our imagination a little bit. Um, but you can see, you, if you need to paint a picture that has all the colors, but you're using a limited palette, you know you can get to those colors uh, one way or another, uh, just even using this limited palette. So that is just a fun experiment for today. Um, I, I thought I'd do actually real quick a color gradient here. Let's see if we use a purple. Um, and make a gradient of lighter and lighter colors. That's easy enough to do. We just, uh, in this case, we just bump up the, the shade a bit. And then we can actually choose whiter and whiter colors as we get down towards the bottom part here. That's easy to do. Say we needed to, um, I think I'm going to merge this at, at this point because it's easier just to uh, pick colors off the screen. Say we needed a yellow. We could do that, or say we needed a uh, a green. We could do that. We could um, let's see. We do have lots of green values and shades here. We can create a uh, darker and darker green, um, or lighter and lighter green. Green tends to get a little bit yellow as it goes, and then we can finally blend that with white. So you can pretty much create any color gradation you wanted here. Uh, equally as well as um, this entire uh, color wheel. We can also use blending to uh, blend this all towards a, uh, a gray color uh, and that sort of thing. So there's pretty much the entire universe still represented uh, in this. Um, some colors are more bright than others, uh, like the purples and yellows are going to be uh, more intense than the, the reds and the, uh, let's see... <laughs> not sure what I've left out in the reds anyways so um just something I want to try out today uh and hopefully explain uh that when we're using a limited palette we're, we're not really limiting ourselves we're just kind of focusing we're focusing on the moods and the the, the universe we want to create uh and not so much on like, hey I want to have every possible color at my fingertips every time I want it we're just kind of focusing on the mood you know uh, we want we, we want a, a color range that's going to be uh, you know say well you know movies movies are uh, movie posters are, are red or orange and blue right so you, you just want to use orange and blue to create a movie poster or or uh, because um, well orange is sort of like something like a flesh color and blues are uh, the opposite of that are deep and deep and moody blue colors you know movies are all blue and and uh, you know dramatic so you want those colors that kind of pop up against each other. Um, and you don't want to get involved with other colors that kind of distract you from that. Or say you want to just all, all red and, uh, just a little bit of blue as a, as a highlight or something. Or say you, you just ignore all these, these other colors altogether, these blues over here. You just focus on these oranges. You just want a color that's nothing but red. Um, well, you can still represent that, that entire spectrum of colors. So if you had a red filter over your, your camera, uh, the blues would still be there, but they'd be filtered out. So they'd be maybe a blue would be maybe just a dark, a dark gray. So we could uh, say, okay, dark gray now is blue, whereas a red red would show up as you know a, a red. <laughs> so uh, you can still represent that entire spectrum of colors uh, to some degree. And yellow and green, you could probably find something like a green in there. The greenest color you could find would be maybe like over there. Uh, and you still get the idea that there's a universe of colors in there, um, even though you're not, this really isn't blue and this really isn't green, but you're suggesting that they're green because they're they're more green or they're more blue than the red or the yellow. So um, uh, we can talk about that for another hour, but, uh, you know, I hope I've given you some ideas here. And I pretty much got to shut down for now, but thanks for watching and talk to you later.